And I say to the church and to you and I today, we see more abomination today than we've ever seen before. Amen. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about something that's unclean, unholy, or provocative. But I'm talking about the definition of the word abomination uh, in reference to something that is detestable, detestable, uh, something that's immoral, obstructive, uh, offensive to God and sin, that which is corrupt and that which has been deprived. Uh, the word abomination go deeper into sacrilege, sacrilege, uh, which is a violation of ingenious uh, treatment of others. It is a, what they call a, of a sacred object or a sacred person. When uh, sacrilege is offense, is a, when it's offensive, is a verb. Uh, but, 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 but it is called blasphemy. When, when someone says something uh, against God in word, it's what they call blasphemy. But when it's physically done to someone, it is a, what they call a desecration or abomination. We're going to learn that this morning. You're going to get somebody to say, Beware, beware. Of, a, of abomination. Abomination. Somebody say it again. Beware, beware. Of abomination. Of abomination. And the word abomination means, come on in, John. Grab a seat right there just for you. So Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 And uh, we just thank God. This is our secret blessing today. Amen. 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 She last night told me she was going to be here. Now she's here. Amen. Hallelujah. For those who don't know, yes. this is Sister Vera's granddaughter. Amen. Amen. God knows what's going on with the heart and the spirit. That's she right. Told me late last night, I just thank God for her. Amen. 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 So, that blessing upon her. So, everybody, turn your Bibles once again to uh, Daniel chapter 12, and then we're going to Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, there's a list of throughout the scriptures about things that are abomination. Amen. And we may not think much in terms of abomination because it's a word that we don't hear much today. Uh, we think about it, uh, and we hear it's something real real terrible, but it's, good. it's being practiced so clearly in the land today that people have taken the word and its definition for granted. And when we think of abomination, we think of something that's uh, unclean or immoral, or something that's offensive not only to man, but especially to God. And the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the Revelation, uh, the word abomination, the word abomination is mentioned 100 and, let me get it right, 100 and 53 times. Amen. The word abomination is mentioned 153 wow. times Amen. Uh, in the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Amen. And we're going to talk about this abomination because in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, who was not considered a prophet, but he was a prophet. And he prophesied the hour that we're living in. And you're going to see this with your very eye. He even mentioned about artificial intelligence. He don't call it a name artificial intelligence, but he made mention of it. And in chapter 12, he says in verse 1, say it with me, he says, and it came to back, and at, 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 at that time, uh, shall Michael, Michael was an archangel of God. That was Michael, Gabriel, and uh, that was Lucifer, better known as Satan, uh, the devil who was cast out of heaven. We're going to learn about him later on. And, it, and at that time, shall Michael stand up Stand up. Amen? Amen. If you stand up for Jesus, he'll stand up for you. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Michael stood up. That great prince was standing for the children of thy people and shall stand be at a time of trouble. He's going to stand up in a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book of life. Everybody raise your hands and say, Lord, Lord, please, Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to say, Lord, please. Lord, please. Lord, write my name. Write my name. Down in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. He said, and many of them that sleep in the grave of the earth are 
shall awake, some for everlasting uh, life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. I don't want to contempt God, and I want to live forever. Somebody say amen. amen. The day that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of this firmament. The day that turn many to righteousness as the stars of ever and forever. You will be a star forever and ever. Yeah. You hear people tell the young people, reach for the star. <laughs> you hear people say that today. Reach for the star. Yeah. People try, they don't make it. But if they reach for the star and don't make it, at least they will come back with star dust in the eye. Yeah, amen, amen. Why? Because when you reach for Jesus, yes. no greater star than to reach for his promised land. Yeah. He said, but thou, O man, remember verse 12, chapter 12, verse 4. Listen carefully now. In chapter 12, verse 4, he says, but thou, O man, shut up the words and seal the book. Seal the book. Even to the time of the end. We are living in end times. Many shall run. Today people are running to and fro. Yes, amen. What are they looking for? What are they searching for? Yes. Where are they trying to go? What plane, what train, what boat, what ship, what superhighway will take them to their destination? Yes. Who are they trying to get to? Daniel said, as a sign of the end time, men will be running to and fro in the earth. Right. Yes, They'll be going here and there, and like any other time, people can travel anywhere on this planet. Right. Yes, Think about the earth. The earth at this imagination line, the equator, is 27,000 miles around at the center. Right. And if you stop and think about that, in a place that men have not been. That's right. From the yeah. North Pole to the South Pole. That's right. But now, men said, we didn't already see what the earth is like. Let us go to Mars. Yes, amen. Let us go to Venus. Let us try and set up a, a workshop on the moon. Man is traveling to and fro, trying to seek out. And he said, and he said in the end, as a sign, knowledge shall increase. Yes, amen, amen. Now, I know some of y'all don't we might not understand this, but there was a time when we used to have what they call a party line. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's right. I know what y'all saying. What's that? Because y'all got cell phones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Right. Y'all can text today. Yeah. You got all these platforms that's right. that you can use. Yeah. You got all these apps that you can use. Now, think about this for one moment. There have been more inventions in the last 124 years, in the last 124 years, than any other time in the history of mankind. The inventions of mankind has tripled and doubled, and it used to be every 50 years there was invention. Now it's down to every seven years. And in the next 10 to 15 years, what you know today and the you you know today is going to be a different view to you. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. Y'all get this? Right. Yes, pretty fast. Enough. The knowledge that you have today that our young people are using, I'm going to be honest with you. I was trying to help put the Micaiah uh, with Mel, and, and they pulled me for a win. Yes, sir. In other words, I'm looking at Mel today and say, wait a minute, what kind of math is this young Amen. Amen. Because what they're learning today is the same math, but in a different way. That's right. Amen. The knowledge that they have today is not only starting from K1 and K2, but they've elevated what they're learning today. When uh, in, in, in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, I learned when I was getting ready to go to college. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And I'm shaking my head and saying, what did they learn today? Mm -hmm. Now, they're everyday common sense, but Daniel wanted you and I to know as a sign of the end time, not only would men have Smart phones, but they have smart watch. Not only will they have, I mean, the future is going to be that you're going to be able to take a taxi, just like you take a taxi in a cab, you're going to be able to fly in a car that's going to be a cab. Mm. Automotive technology. <laughs> Automation cars will be driving themselves. I don't know about it, but some of y'all got cars. You used to stick their key in the ignition. Now you just push the button. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. You know, amen. The boys come over there. Amen. I'm talking about yeah, it looks bizarre and strange to do this. Now you don't even have to take a key and use your a key to unlock the door. That's you just right. go up and because amen. we're dealing with a wireless system. Yes. If that ain't knowledge, they don't know what it is. Amen. It's scary. Yes, it is. You were locked up, God forbid, in prison for 20, 30 years. There was a prisoner that sworn the government because he had backlashes because the door, when he went to it, opened up by himself. They're going to show you how long he's been locked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you go before everybody know when you go up in these automatic doors, the door opened and closed by itself yeah, because yeah. it's got a sensor. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But if you've been locked up so much and all you heard was clink, 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 clink. But when you got out, all you see is the door open up by itself. Or you ask somebody, how did that work? It ain't got no you ain't plugged up to the electricity in the wall. How did that work? It's all about wireless systems. Yes, amen. And you don't know that you're being wired right now. My God. It ain't talking about just talk. I ain't talking about being on a camera here and a camera back there. I'm talking about everywhere you go, big brothers watch. Yes, amen. They know where you spend your money, they know where you're going on vacation. They know when you've been there, when you get yes. back. They know your chip because your credit card. They know how you spend money. And today, young people, come on, somebody. They ain't using money. Everything's credit card. That's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. Knowledge about everyday life is going to increase. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel said, I looked and behold, there stood, or stood other two, one on one side of the bank, of the river and the other on the other side of the river. And one said a man clothed in linen, which was upon the river of the uh, waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these waters? See, we're wondering today, what is life going to be like? We are fighting wars now that we've never fought. Verse 7, 12 and 7 says, And Daniel said, now remember now, these are thousands of years that is written here that we're reading and living today. Uh -huh. That's proof that God's word is going to come to pass. Amen, amen. And it's proof that God said, I'm going to reveal it to each and every one of you, even in the time. You ever wonder why you weren't born 100 years ago and why you're born today? Right. Amen. God has a plan for you. Yes, amen, amen. And somebody says, there's a reason, there's a reason. why I'm here. But there's a God's purpose. Yes, amen. God has a purpose. Yes, he you. says, and I heard the man clothed and living, which were upon the rivers of water, and he held up his right hand. He held up his right hand, and then he held up his left hand to heaven. And he swore by him that lived forever, that it shall be for a time and a time and a half. And he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of his holy people. All these things shall be finished. And I heard, in verse 8, stay with me now. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said, I oh my God. Did you know God's middle name was mine? Come on, somebody. When you're in trouble, you say, oh my God. Amen. You didn't know God had a middle name. You didn't know God's middle name was have, Lord, have mercy. Come on, somebody. Look around somebody and say, God got a middle name. Amen. Amen. You might have a middle initial, but God got a middle name. Amen. 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 And he said, I heard and understood what would happen in verse 9. And he said, go thy way, tell Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and they're sealed till the time of end. God said, now that which was concealed and sealed up, I'm going to reveal. Men shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wicked. This is what we're seeing today. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice, this is abomination, at the time of the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, that means sin offering of the Old Testament. And the abomination that make it death, that which is detestable, that which is corrupt, would be isolated, set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety-two days. 
90 days. Then he said, Blessed is he that waited and coming to the 1,305 30 days. But go thou thy way now till the end. Be. For thou shalt rest and shalt stand in thy lot at the end of thy day. Somebody say, Lord bless the reading of thy word. Somebody say, Lord bless the me bleeding the, the, the reading of thy mighty word. My, my, my. I think y'all heard it, but I think y'all read it, but y'all kind of looked at it and said, where is he going with this? Because Daniel was revealed in a revelation that the children of Israel had a holy temple. And it was built by King Solomon. And after the fall of, uh, of, of the kings of Israel fell, the adversaries came down and they took over the holy temple of God. And, and where God, Ark of the Covenant was, it was removed and it went into the holies of holies and they set up an abomination of the idols that they worshipped. Now, you might not look at it today, but anything can be an idol. Amen. And anytime you put something before God, yeah. it becomes an abomination. Yeah. Anytime you put whatever you got before God Almighty, it can be desecrated. It can be sacrilege. Yeah. And it can be blasphemy yeah. when you speak yeah. words. People got to be careful what they say about God. People got to be careful what they say about you and me. People got to be careful what they say in the hour from the media because God has made everybody know I'm not going to tolerate any more abomination. What we're seeing today is abomination of desolation where men and women that cause their lifestyle are going in places and they're dissatisfying God. They're living an abomination life and yet they want to elevate themselves and make a parade and make a mockery of God. God is not pleased. That's right. Amen. Amen. He told Daniel, as a sign, you're going to see these abominations. Right. You got people at the White House. You got people at the governor's mansion. Yeah. You got people at the mayor's office. Yeah. You got people around the world that are demonstrating abomination and they're smirking at God and they're challenging God. He won't do that. That's right. Amen. Let me tell you something. God is not one to be played with. Amen. Yes. I'm going to tell you now. If you're in the way, God will move you out of That's way. right. Amen. Amen. If you got trouble, yes. God can help you. Oh, if you got to call on him, yes. Jeremiah said, call on him. Yes. And he will help. Uh, 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 Boston the snowman and 
uh, uh, Abban will snow me. But y'all look at me like that. They watch these cartoons and not knowing they hear the word abomination. Mm -hmm, that's right. What made him abominable? Because he was defiant. He was defiled. He defiled. And the narrow the story is letting you and I know that when they took the temple of God and they brought in Nacon. Anytime you remove God out of your life and allow the gods of the world to come in, that God that you are worshiping is become the abomination of the God. That's what it means to abomination of desolation. You're finding yourself incomplete. That's why we see what we see today. Men and women today, children today are killing their parents. People are turning on one another. Jesus warned us about this abomination of desolation. When man refused to come to the truth and righteousness, he found himself in an empty place. I'm trying to talk to you this morning. This is a rare message that I'm preaching. Because the Bible is full of men and women that got in trouble with God. Look around somebody and say, don't get in trouble with God. Don't get in trouble with God. Come on, look at them real good and touch about the head. They gonna watch you. Don't get in trouble with God. See, because when you're in trouble with God, all I'm gonna do is say, Lord, your middle name is Hal. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Talking right? Amen. You got children, you got sons and daughters and brothers and sisters. Come on, somebody. If we didn't tell them all we can tell them. Come on, somebody. If you can't help them, then leave them alone. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't with me on this now. I'm trying to talk to you. If you can't help them, come on, somebody. If God give you the spirit of helping them, come on, somebody. And you can't help them, leave them alone. Amen. There comes a time in your life when you need all you can do. And when they say, oh, my dad, you don't know what you're talking about. You just look at them and say, I'm going to leave you in God's hands. Amen. Bye, bye, bye. You see, the Bible tells me very clearly that the prophet Eli, y'all know him, Eli, uh, who was a prophet at the time when uh, Israel was fighting the Philistines. Now think about this for a moment. The Philistines are today's Palestinians. All right, y'all got that? Amen. That's the one right now with Hamas and the Gaza and they're fighting Israel. They were called in the Old Testament, the Philistines. Mm. They've been fighting them then and they're fighting them now. My God. Now you ask me, what has changed? All right? I want you to think about this for a moment. This Eli was a prophet, a man of God. He was a priest that stood before God, a holy man. The Bible said he was about 90, 92 years old. And he had two sons that was in the priesthood. But they won't no good. I ain't mad at nobody. Come on, somebody. Amen. You either for the Lord or you're not for the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and then Eli tried to raise him up in the right way. He tried to give them instruction. But Hophius and Phineas was up to no good. Yeah. And what they did was offensive to God. God let them go right along and do their thing. And they thought they were getting away with it, but I'm here to tell you, God's eyes are everywhere beholding the evil and the good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. This may be heavy meat for some of y'all today, but there's a lot of meat on this bone. This Eli was worried about Israel fighting the Philistines, and when they went out to battle on the first day of scrimmage, Israel lost 4,000 men just that quick. Bible said when they went back and plead with Eli, he allowed the ark along with his two sons that were no good to go out of the battle with the ark of the covenant. And when the word got out of the ark and with the children of Israel, they shouted a great shout from earth. And the Philistines quaked in fear because they felt God was on Israel's side. Well, the reason why Israel got in trouble is because they brought in all kind of idols into their life. That's it. They brought TikTok. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, Amen. That's they brought true. Facebook. Come on, somebody. Uh, Y'all, are you with me on this stuff? Right. Don't get mad with me. See, when you start inviting them platforms in your life, That's you right. find yourself looking at something you ain't got no business looking at. Amen. You start hearing things you ain't got no business hearing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because 
So if you stop and think about everything they put on TikTok, which is interesting, that has a baseline in China, and China has banned TikTok in their own country. Yes, so they want to heat up on the
There are seven things in abomination. A hawking look, and me looking down at somebody. Like we're better than them. That's right. Amen. Look around somebody say, I hope you ain't got a haughty look. I hope you ain't got a haughty look. Number two, a lying tongue. Amen. Amen. Last time you told a lie. Amen. 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 When the last time you told a lie? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm looking for a lie. That's what I'm talking about. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood, uh -huh. a heart that divides wickedness, uh -huh. schemes and plots, feet that are swift to run, to run to mischief, to run to and fro, uh -huh. a false witness who utters nothing but lies. One who spread strife among the brothers. Mm -hmm. There are seven things that God says is an abomination to him. You and I have to be careful that your yay be yay and your nay be nay. I know you might not want to hear this, but somebody got to preach it. Somebody got to tell you. Now I just the 
is to put it down. I didn't feel nothing. But when he put his head on top of mine, I got a shock. Are y'all with me on this? Come on, somebody. I felt something that, and it went through me, and he didn't kind of put his, my hand down, Junior. He kept it there, and then he looked at me. Are y'all with me? And when he got on the other side, I walked with him a little bit, but I went back and touched the wire. There wasn't no electricity in that wire. The power was in the man of God. The anointing was in the man of God. Peace. 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 Peace.
shield. When there's trouble on the right, and there's trouble on the left, peace, be still. When mama don't want to act right, and daddy didn't love me all along, I said, peace, be still. When our friends that walk out on me, peace, be still. I'm looking to the hill from which coming my help. Back down to 
down to Egypt. Never mind. Amen. There are people thinking, call I don't see you. Uh, it's right. all right. Amen. That's right. Look around somebody and say, but God sees you. God sees you. You can't escape God's eyes. The Bible says God got eyes all in the back of his head. Well, you can't see what's going on back there. God can't. And the Bible said while they were down, down there in the wilderness, this, this, this Korah who was in charge of the Korites, who was these men, now understand something, these men were called to service by God. There were the Korites, uh, uh, Dorfam and Abinadab, all these men were called by God and 250 renowned men, renowned men of Israel were called by God to be servants unto the ministry. They were the gatekeepers. They was the bakers. They was in charge of service for praise and worship in the temple of God. But when they got out in the wilderness, they didn't like what Moses was doing. And then they railed on Moses and told Moses, you think you something now. You didn't brought us out of the wilderness where this man that was supposed to be flowing with milk and honey to rule over us. And Moses, who were tired to him, come on somebody, couldn't get his word out, but he started praying. If you're going to worry, don't you pray. Amen. But if you pray, yes. please don't worry. Yeah. 
Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.